Nigeria Republic's junta last week severed ties with Nigeria Fran and France, its former colonial ruler, Togo, and the United States. Spokesperson for the coup leader, General Abdurrahmane Chiane, Colonel Major Amadou Abdurrahmane, made the pronouncement during a national broadcast on Thursday. The development came as Nigeria's president and ECOWAS chairman, Bola Tinubu, dispatched a delegation led by former military head of state, General Abdul Salam Abubakar, to Niger Republic to explore channels for its possible resolution of the diplomatic dispute, which arose from last week's military takeover in the West African country. In the meantime, the clock continues to tick towards the end of a seven-day deadline given to Niger's coup leaders by ECOWAS to reverse the coup and reinstate the government of President Mohamed Bazoum. Meanwhile, the Nigerian Senate on Saturday rejected a request by President Bola Tinubu for an approval to embark on an immediate deployment of troops in Niger Republic. The upper chamber of the National Assembly advised President Tinubu, who is chairman of ECOWAS, to further explore political and diplomatic options available to them over the use of any military action to resolve the crisis in Niger Republic. The senators condemned the forceful takeover of power in Niger and resolved to engage more with President Tinubu on the political situation in that country. Tinubu had in his letter intimated this Senate about resolutions reached by a meeting of ECOWAS heads of state and government. Part of that resolution included the closure of all land borders with the Niger Republic, imposition of a flight ban, cutting off of electricity supply, and stopping goods in transit to Niger from Lagos and another eastern seaport. The Senate, however, stated that the president had not sought approval to go to war with Niger, but merely solicited for support for the implementation of the resolutions of ECOWAS. Professor Usman Yusuf is a professor of hematology, oncology, and bone marrow transplantation. Critically, he has played an extensive role in interfacing on behalf of the Nigerian government with several groups of non-state actors operating out of swaths of ungoverned spaces between Nigeria and Niger Republic. He joins us now on This Day Live. Good to have you, Professor Usman Yusuf. Thank you for joining us on This Day Live, the Sunday talk show. Thank you, uh, Ruben, for having me. OK, uh, Prof, I, I read a piece you wrote. I think that was yesterday or two days ago, titled War on Niger Republic will be war on Northern Nigeria. And in that piece, you express the same sentiments expressed by senators from those seven states uh, bordering Niger Republic in the northern part of Nigeria, Sokoto, Kebi, Kasina, Zamfara, those seven states. And they are saying a declaration of war in Niger against Niger would put those seven states at risk. Nigeria, of course, sharing over 1,000 uh, square meters, uh, 1,000 square kilometers, about 999 miles of border with uh, Niger. But why do you think an attack on Niger, in line with ECOWAS resolution, will amount to an attack on northern Nigeria? The territories are distinct. Right. Right. Uh, I saw the piece before we started. I am really shocked. The primary responsibility of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu is to Nigeria and not to ECOWAS. He answers to us. He's not even addressed Nigerians and justify what he's going to do. He's gone to the Senate to ask for approval. That's no way to declare war. It's not easy declaring war. You're sending your men and women into harm's way to go and get killed and kill. I've said it clearly from the outset of that, of that uh, piece I wrote, I am not into political correctness. We in the North, we are tired of wars. We have been at war for 13 years, for 14 years now with Boko Haram, since 20, 2009, and nine years with bandits and kidnappers. And you're bringing a fresh war to us? And we share with Niger Republic long before the creation of these two uh, entities, Niger and uh, Nigeria, we have shared heritages in our culture, 
in our religion, in our, in our languages. We share a border over a thousand kilometers from the west, from the northwesterly end in Kebi to the northeasterly end in, in, in Borno. We have Zabarmas in Nigeria and, 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 and Niger. We have houses. They are the predominant tribe in, in Niger, 53%. We have Fulanis. We have Kanuris. The whole of Difa region around uh, the northeast of Nigeria, they are Kanuris. So we're going to war and killing them for what? Before any president goes to war, he comes and explains to his people, these are the reasons why I'm going to war. What are the strategic importance, economic, security, or political strategic importance of going to war? What are the self-interests of that country in going to war? The people who are going to war on, on, on their behalf, the Western world, France and the United States, they have already, they know what their interests are. Their strategic interest is not the people of Niger or Nigeria, but well, what is underneath the soil of Niger and Nigeria. Prof, well, is this really about so, ethnic identity? Go ahead. Is this about ethnic identity? The president it's, approached the Senate, no, you are, you are, as, as, as stated in Section 5 of the Constitution, because the president of Nigeria cannot go to war without the approval of the National Assembly at a joint session. Or he may not uh, go to the, he may just uh, seek the consent of the National Defense Council and send troops on limited combat duty. But he was talking specifically about resolutions of ECOWAS. He's chairman of ECOWAS, and right, Nigeria good. is uh, a signatory to the Constitutive Act of ECOWAS on, uh, on uh, coups and military interventions in uh, right. the region. Right. Right. So he's, he's sounding like he's answerable more to ECOWAS than to Nigerians. We in Nigeria, 78% of the land mass of Nigeria, seven states, and 19 states in this country are saying no to an unprovoked war with Niger. It's not ECOWAS. His primary responsibility is to Nigerians, not to ECOWAS. He's not convinced us why he should send boots to the ground in, 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 in Niger Republic. And for goodness sake, where are you going to get the troops from? The Nigerian military is stretched all across, deployed all across the 36 states of this country. Where is he going to get the troops from? Is he going to pull troops from the northwest or the northeast or the southeast? The only place there is some leeway is the southwest. And that will be a small number of troops. And he should be very, very careful. That is what I wrote there. He is going to do the bidding of the Western world. The fight in Niger is not our fight. It is going to be a proxy war between Russia and NATO. And this is what concerns me the most. We are being surrounded by countries now where you are having this proxy war between these two countries. And we are going to do their bidding. President Bola Ahmed Tinibu has not even settled down. He doesn't even have his team and is declaring war without consulting the people without the consent of the people, okay. no, we say no to war and we're not going to support any war. Okay, I get your point. Uh, you had a number of recommendations, one of which is that diplomacy should be uh, the best option. Where that diplomacy, as ECOWAS chair, uh, President Tinubu had the liaise with President Patrice Talon of, uh, of uh, Republic of Benin. He was the first person to go there. President Idris Deby, of uh, Chad was also sent there. Um, the chief of uh, air staff of Nigeria and the former governor of uh, Kassina State, Amenu Masari, and one other were also sent there. Uh, they didn't make progress. Only this week, uh, General Abdul Salami Abubakar and the Sultan were also uh, sent, you know, as a delegation, as part of a delegation to talk to the coup leaders. In fact, they were not even granted the uh, audience. So that diplomatic option has been, uh, has been pursued. It has failed. Are you suggesting that if the other ECOWAS chiefs, ECOWAS presidents, now that their army, army chiefs have met, if they decide to go ahead, Nigeria should just pull out? How would that make us look? No, I am say no I'm saying if they decide to go, that will be wrong. Wrong decision. 
And if President Bola Ahmed Tinubu takes the decision as the chairman of ECOWAS to go to war, he's doing that on his own. No, but I'm saying that it's not, not a unilateral, it it's not a unilateral no, no. decision. No, 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 no. It's a group decision. No, no. Nigeria, no. No. Nigeria is Nigeria. And he is governing 200 million people. We have to give him approval to do that, even if he's the chairman of, 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 uh, of, of ECOWAS. The president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is more relevant to us than being the chairman of ECOWAS. We, are, we that know are telling him things that his advisors will not tell him, that going to war, sending troops into Niger Republic will be a disaster, unprovoked. We have had our own share of military uh, takeovers in Nigeria. Nobody sent troops to us. What of Mali? What of Guinea? What of Burkina Faso? What of that Chad? That was the place where the fr French president was there babysitting the current president. Nobody sent troops there. We need to be very, very careful. Is there an internal problem? And we should be able to help them. And the reason why we are saying negotiations do not help, at the very beginning, you are putting on the table the threat of violence, the threat of force, and you're asking the other party to listen to you, you have brought your last trump card at the very beginning. There's no way to do it. And it's showing the inexperience of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu on the international scene. He's not been properly advised. He does not have his team to advise him properly. You do not do that. Okay, let's say you roll in your tanks, if you have them, into Niger Republic, what do you do? What do you do? You install Bazoom by force and you stay there and keep him by force? We have seen the United States going to Iraq, going to Afghanistan, saying they are going to bring democracy. Where are they now? We need to be very, very, very careful. Military option is not the option. We have to. My recommendations are, first of all, take that threat of violence off the table because that is what is making them more entrenched into their positions. That's why they refuse to see our, our, uh, our, our elders. You are saying you're going to hit them and you're going to talk to them. Why are you here then? Take the threat of violence off the table. Start serious and sincere negotiation. And most importantly is how are you going to help them solve this problem, which is an internal problem. By solving this problem is that how are we going to do it? What is going to happen to Bazoom? The safety of Bazoom and his family must be paramount. What is going to happen after that? What do Nigerians want? Do we want this military for how long? How can we pressure, we, the ECOWAS and the international community, pressure the junta to have a timetable to transition to a democratic rule as soon as possible without the threat of violence? And essentially ECOWAS has declared war. They have closed borders. They have closed uh, airspace. They have, uh, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu unilaterally, unilaterally broke the treaty between Nigeria and Niger that was signed in 1960, that Nigeria would be supplying uh, Niger Republic with uh, electricity. Nigeria currently supplied 70% of electricity to Niger Republic. In exchange, Niger Republic will not dam River Niger up front, up, upstream. If they dam River Niger upstream, we'll all be dry. We won't have Kainji Dam. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu unilaterally, without reverting to the Congress, uh, 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 broke that, that, that treaty. Now the capital, the mayor, is in darkness. And you are saying, uh, we, we are going to, this is a country that, that has 40% of its budget is foreign aid. Biden, Sanctions, you close their borders, no fly zone, you close, uh, you, you cut electricity. Well, what uh, is at stake is more than just what we see. Well, we uh, don't understand. The president needs to be Ralph, properly briefed. Ralph, and he isn't. He doesn't look like he is. Prof, well, except that in war, all is fine as in love. Uh, so if we cut off the electricity, uh, it may not hurt us significantly. We get 85% of electricity supply in Nigeria from uh, thermal stations. Igbin, Giregu, Afam, Omotosho, you know, uh, all those uh, stations are thermal stations. Kanji, Shiruru, and Jeba 
are the ones that depend on hydro. So even if they dam, uh, you know, the river Niger, we'll still be fine, I guess, if we put our ass together. But you were saying that President Tinubu wants to go to war so as to give his government legitimacy. What is the connection? Absolutely. But, but, very important connections. So President Tinubu, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, his election is contested, is still in court. He has legitimacy issues nationally and internationally. And for him now, he's the ECOWAS chairman. Of course, he gives him that chair. But still, the elephant in the room is the election is still contested in court. Well, if he does that, now uh, the Western world are calling him. The other day, they say the vice president of the United States, Kamala Harrison, called him to find out. Nigerians should ask, did Kamala Harrison ever call when people are slaughtered in anywhere in the North? Anywhere in the North? They care for us, or oh, Macron calls us, calls the president. They don't care for us. They don't care for Nigerians. They care for what is on the ground. And we need to be very, very careful. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu should be very careful and not drag Nigeria into this proxy war between NATO and the Soviet and, and Russia in, 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 in Niger. And Wagner are coming to Niger just like they are in Libya, in Sudan, in Mozambique, in, in, in Guinea, in Mali. And we, at the moment they get into Niger, they are, they are after resources. And the most important resource is uranium. Niger has the seventh largest uh, deposit of uranium that France has been exploiting for, since independence. And you have see the punery, see the poverty in, in Niger. The second thing is we have this Trans-Saharan pipeline that is built to be piped from Wari through Niger up to Algeria to stop in Algeria and then go into Morocco and Tunisia to Europe. This is a very, very important pipeline for Europe and the United States as an alternative because Russia during this Ukraine war is blocking supply of gas to, 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 to them. So this is very, very important. The United States is there not for God, country, or the love of Nigeria or Niger. They are there because of the resources. France, we know France has been there. France has never loved democracy. We need to be very careful. At a time, and I wrote it in that letter, in that piece, at a time when African Francophone countries like Burkina Faso, like uh, Mali, they are severing their ties with, with, uh, with France. Our president, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, is being dragged into, into, being, into being their okay, ally. Prof, they can never be good allies. Prof, today is the uh, deadline that ECOWAS has given. And you are saying, forget about military intervention. Would this not amount to a loss of face? not just for Nigeria, but for all the other countries, considering the fact that our chief of defense staff, uh, General Musa, is even the chair of the uh, ECOWAS uh, chiefs, uh, you know, defense chiefs. Uh, how do we live with that? Uh, what would look like an embarrassment, or if you like, disgrace? Because the uh, yeah. coup leaders in Niger, yeah. they've been snobbing Nigeria routinely. No, uh, Ruben, we have never had issues with Niger. During the civil war, Niger was a very important ally when Cote d'Ivoire and Gabon were against us, when France was against us. Niger has always been a steadfast ally of Nigeria. We've never had issues with them. We've never fought them. We go in there, we will see the father and mother of banditry and Boko Haram like we've never seen. Forget faces. It's not our ego or the face of the president or anybody. It's about Nigeria and about the lives we are going to commit to battle. This is the most important. This is not well thought through. This is misguided and will not be accepted by people, especially we here in the north that live in close proximity to this war. These are our flesh and blood. They are our people. They've done nothing to us. They are our allies. They be you go to Zamfara. You go to Katina, you go to Niger, you go to uh, Borno State. They have been, they have been helping villagers 
when bandits come. And over 300,000 of Nigerians are IDPs in the Nigerian Republic from all of these conflicts. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, instead of starting a fresh war, we want you to close these wars. Boko Haram, 14 years. Uh, banditry, nine years. We want you to give marching orders to the military. We want this Boko Haram and banditry to end and end now. It can be done. We don't want it to be a forever war. Our societies have been devastated. Economies devastated. Our, 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 our schools, hospitals, infrastructures devastated. You are starting another war and you expect us to support you. Why? Okay. We voted for you. That is we, not I. I didn't vote for you. Those that voted for you voted for you to bring peace to our land. We want you this year to bring an end to Boko Haram and banditry instead of opening another battle uh, front in, in Niger Republic. That well, is your mandate from Nigerians, not ECOWAS. Well, Prof, you've been talking about proxy war, um, Russia and NATO, you kept mentioning them. Well, France is also at the center of this. France, Germany, the US, they have military bases in, in Niger. And some people have been saying, why yes. did they fold their yes. arms and allow the, yes. uh, uh, the coup to take place? That's one question. But specifically the role of France. You said France doesn't like democracy. Well, there has been a rebellion against France in Niger and also in Mali. The coup leaders in uh, Mali have just decided to cancel about 11 agreements that they signed with uh, France in 1961, uh, including France uh, having control over their external reserves, and also, you know, having the first right of refusal over mineral resources in the country. Is this the beginning of the end for France in West Africa, or it may not go that far? We hope and pray it is. All these colonial powers should leave these colonies alone, should get out of their colonies. They've been exploiting their resources. Look at all the Francophone countries very rich in, 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 in natural resources, nothing to show. What, the, what are they doing there? What have they benefited from their being there? And France is now coming to tell us, oh, it loves democracy, and the United States, that it has no business being around here, has, has, has bases with over 1,000, they have about 1,100 uh, soldiers there with drone base. They are watching over all the Sahel. They are saying they are after terrorists and Islamists. And France has, has, has troops there. They moved their troops that were kicked out of Mali into, in, into Niger. We are in solidarity with our brothers and sisters in Niger Republic that no war should come to them. We will be the ones who are going to suffer in northern Nigeria, and we are not going to give any support to President Bola Ahmed Tinubu to commit our forces to this unguided and unjustified war. I cannot be any more clearer than this. Okay. Let me go back to the Constitution. What if President Tinubu, backed by Nigeria's National Defense Council, decides to go ahead? What will be the implications? Because the Constitution uh, sub-5, Section 5 says, notwithstanding the provisions of Section 4 of this section, the president in consultation with the National Defense Council may deploy members of the armed forces of the Federation on a limited combat duty outside Nigeria if he is satisfied that the national security is under imminent threat or danger, provided that within seven days he will now seek the consent of the Senate. So what if he goes ahead? In a limited sense, right. what so would be the implications? One thing. Good. Niger Good. One thing. Nigeria's national security is not, is not threatened. It's not under threat. Neither the president nor his military chiefs have come and convinced Nigerians that our national security is under threat. It isn't. We is see no reason. We see no, 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 no evidence to show that. And National Defense Council, who are the constituents of that National Defense Council? Who? He does not even have his cabinet. What council is he talking about? 
the only counsel he has are him, himself and his advisors and, and the service chiefs. The service chiefs are not, they are subordinate to political powers. And the president cannot make decision alone like he's been making, even during the economy. You see all of this, the economy, he's doing all of this, the economy, economic policies without assembling his own team. So he, will, he cannot do that, and he will not do that, and we will not allow him to do that. We will protest, we will not let him do that. We will mobilize people, all Nigerians of good faith, against this war. There's no reason to go to this war. He has not even talked to Nigerians to convince us why he should, he okay. should send our, our men and women into harm's way. And okay. most importantly, we do not have the capacity to do that. This is the honest truth. The danger is that the United States or France or NATO will come and tell our military or our president, we are going to help you with logistics. This is what they did in, in, in Libya. They killed Gaddafi and then they ran and left. Look at uh, Libya, uh, where it is today. This is Iraq. Where are they today? This is Afghanistan. Where is it? Wherever they go, bad things happen. Okay. So well, our president should not commit our military to this misguided war without talking to us Nigerians and convincing us. But I will tell him this for free, that his advisors will not tell him. We in the North... We will not support any form of aggression on Niger Republic. Unprovoked. We see no reason to do that. None at all. None. Well, we have enough problem. Mr. President and your military should look inward and take care of Boko Haram and banditry that have been plaguing us for the last 14 years. You cannot handle this uh, ragtag uh, bandits on motorcycle. You are, uh, you are pulling tanks and going there. This is your job. Do not leave these two wars as abandoned project and move to, to, to open another theater of war, which you will lose. You well, will lose. What is your exit strategy? What is your exit strategy? You go there, put Bazoom and leave. Are you going to remain there forever to hold Bazoom? Okay. Come uh, on. Prof, it's interesting. Common sense must come in here. It is interesting to note that you are not alone. Go ahead. Uh, it's interesting to note that you are not alone. Uh, this position you hold. Um, uh, Chief Olabode George shares your view. Uh, Senator Shehu Sani uh, said more or less the same thing. The Jamatu Nasrul Islam also issued a statement to that effect. And of course, the lawmakers from uh, those seven states that I listed earlier on also share the same view. But let's see what happens after today when you know, the deadline is over. Uh, whether the uh, ECOWAS uh, heads of state and government uh, will reverse their position and say that, well, they will just be watching the development story and stick to diplomacy uh, in engaging EJ. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Yusuf, uh, for joining us on This Day Live, the Sunday talk show. <music>